program hopping, shiny object syndrome, permit junkie, muscle fetish, hero addiction, arm dominance, wrecking balling, gnarly grimace, putting first things last, and light switch lifestyle. I'm sure you've never heard of these mistakes before. Even there's hundreds, if not even thousands, of kettlebell beginner mistakes on YouTube. However, I guarantee you that these are maybe unheard of, but very common. But before we get started, we help busy over 40s get in shape with only 30 minutes of kettlebell training per week in the next 30 days. If that's something you're interested in and you want to find out how we do it, check the first link in the description and download our free ebook called The Kettlebell Code. Grüezi miteinander, Gregory von Lebestark here. Let's jump right into these 10 mistakes that I've outlined in the beginning. Number one, program hopping. Program hopping essentially means that you jump from one program to the other. You follow this coach, you follow that coach, you follow that strength and conditioning specialist, you follow this kettlebell expert, so on and so forth. And while it makes sense to gather information from different parts, because everybody has maybe their own take on a particular situation, it can be misleading and confusing, especially when you're a beginner. So my advice to you is when you're starting out, follow one particular program or coach or expert. And then once you've reached the peak of the pyramid and you understand what it's all about and you understand the nuances and you have a solid sense of discernment, then you can venture out on your own. Mistake number two, shiny object syndrome, S-O-S. -S. Now shiny object syndrome is closely tied together with program hopping. We start something because we think this can help us. So we jump on it like an animal. And then we feast on it, we use it, we apply its information. But then somewhere in the distance, we see something sparkling, we see something shining. And what we then do is we jump from this particular system that we're feasting on right now onto the next one because it's sparkling. And because it promises us new benefits, new features, new whatever have you. So what's the solution? Again, similar to program hopping, you want to laser focus and you want to follow a particular style or program or idea or strategy or workout and then don't move to the left or to the right but stick to it because at the end of the day, especially when it comes to kettlebells which is involved with learning a lot of skills, you have to put in a lot of reps and a lot of work. Number three, the permit junkie. I see this on our YouTube channel so often. People are asking for permission. And this again ties into shiny object syndrome and program hopping. People, for example, they see a workout that we post on YouTube. And then I'm saying, let's take the one that we've done recently, which I can link right here, it was a powerful workout, 226 workout of the week. Now what happens all the time is that people say, well, can I do farmer's walks instead of snatch? Can I do a press instead of a squat? Can I do a backflip instead of a jerk or whatever have you? I put in my knowledge and I put in the resources to build this workout. So you can assume if you trust the way how we do it, that what I'm give, giving you is a complete meal. You don't need no supplements to it and you do not, don't need to change it. If you do decide to change it up, don't ask for permission, don't ask me. It's like, hey, is the swing good for me? Can I do this and that? And it's not that you're asking a simple question where you wanna get an advice. It's not asking for advice, it's asking for permission. Mistake number four, muscle fetish. Now, can you build muscle with kettlebells? Of course, it's a weight. And if you apply the solid and proper knowledge and the laws of building quality muscle with a weight, you will build muscle, of course. But it's not the optimal way to build muscle. And so many folks jump into kettlebells and then they ask questions like, well, what do I do for neck? What do I do for biceps? What do I do for legs? Kettlebells don't work like this. It is building muscle, but it's also building endurance. It's also improving your mobility. It's also being soft on the joints. It's also combating your back pain. See, the kettlebell is not the best tool, 
that exists, but it is one of the best generalist tools that exists. So it touches all these bases of human qualities all at once in a single workout. But of course, when it comes to building muscle and you want to look like a bodybuilder or you want to continue this gym type of mentality with kettlebells, I have to disappoint you. Even though you can still do it, it is not the optimal way. Mistake number five, the hero addiction. Now many of you guys are watching too much YouTube. And isn't that funny? Coming from a guy who's posted over 1,400 YouTube videos on our channel. Now hero addiction is being addicted to whatever the YouTuber X and Y says, right? So for example, you hear me say something. For example, I think the get up is a funny exercise. I, I start calling it the circus get up because it's a circus exercise. It's nothing special. It's a funny exercise that can mix things up, but I believe it's not the most bang for your buck. However, if I feel like it, I do a heavy get up, right? A heavy get up for beam will be 40 kg or 44 kg or whatever have you. Now then people show up on my channel and they say, well, Dan Jones says that you're not supposed to do heavy get ups, right? And this is when you have hero addiction. Same thing with me, which I believe maybe some other experts were like, why are you bringing this Leberstock guy always up? Why are you talking about Gregory and stuff? And I see this problem, for example, with Pavel Tatsulin or with all the, the strong first, RKC, or even kettlebell sport, right? Valery Fedorenko said this. Well, but Sergei Rudnev said this, right? It's the same thing. So people always flock to this one idea and they say, well, this is my guru, and if he says something, I take it face value and I don't question it. I, and I think that's a problem. How can you say something like this? Well, because I've spent some time with the tool, I've gathered some experience, and maybe I just have a different conclusion. With mistake number six, it gets a little bit more practical. Arm dominance. Arm dominance is especially visible and put on display when it comes to the ballistics and exercises with momentum. Now, if you are from the traditional gym type of background where you do everything with a lot of tension and dynamic exercise and no momentum, no anything, you probably don't understand the relationship between contraction and relaxation in a sense where you add some additional momentum and where inertia comes into play. And then arm dominance is always a problem. So what does arm dominance, for example, in the swing looks like? It looks like this. Watch my arms. So as you can see, I'm breaking the momentum and there's no hip engagement involved. And everything that I'm doing is kind of like in a ballistic upright row. That's what I'm doing, all right? So everything that I'm feeling is in my arms. And what is your arm? Your arm is nothing less but a leash. It is an extension where the kettle was attached to, but it doesn't lead the arm. It just heave. It doesn't lead the kettlebell. It just heaves the kettlebell. So if we go back to the example with the swing, watch. If I have arm dominance, this is what it looks like. We'll remember it, right? Sure. And now watch me as I turn it off. And now watch my arm. So the focus is now almost exclusively in my hips. And I keep these arms loose. Mistake number seven, wrecking balling. Now wrecking balling is what I refer to as destroying your wrist or your forearm when you clean or snatch the weight. So racking balling is this, watch. I'm cleaning the weight up, so clean means racking it, and then I have too much momentum, and whoom, bam, right? The kettlebell crashes on my forearm. The same thing happens in the snatch, because the snatch is nothing less than the next level of the clean. So if I make mistakes in the clean, I'll always make mistakes in the snatch, right? So it's this, boom. And in order to help me get my point across, I wanna reference this flyer that I've got from Pro Kettlebell. Since you're used to grabbing the kettlebell like a dumbbell, then you also think that you have to grab the kettlebell like a dumbbell, right? So that's why people start grabbing it like this, right? And by the way, if you see a kettlebell expert, grab it like this, run. I insert my hand diagonally inside the window of the kettlebell, and now my web space, this thing right here, connects with the upper corner, and my forearm bone connects with the lower horn. It allows me to work with the kettlebell for an indefinite amount of time. <sighs> Engaging into endurance and strength endurance, which I believe is the USP of kettlebell training. And this is the beautiful thing about kettlebells, right? If I grab it like this, I don't 
grab the weight, but I attach the weight to my frame. Mistake number eight, gnarly grimaces. Have you ever seen kettlebell folks or just trainees or athletes in general do this? Right? <laughs> so when they train, their brain explodes, right? <laughs> and they put this funny grimace on. And sometimes I think it's for show. Stop grimacing. Instead, learn how to control your face, right? I call it the assassin's face or the poker face. From the Russian literature, when we look at Dr. Yuri Berkhoshansky, he even says that when it comes to cyclic exercises, if you see that the athlete has a poker face expression, this is a display of skill. And he also follows this up with saying that when it comes to maximum strength exercises, this doesn't have to be the case. So when we lift very heavy, it might be that we pull a grimace like this because our neuromuscular system is getting uh, uh, fried right now, right? So maybe this changes the outlook of your face. Take your time to master these exercises first and don't care about your face in the beginning. Mastering an exercise that requires a lot of skill is like building a house. You don't start with the balcony and the roof, but you start with the foundation, with the fundamentals. So understand the fundamentals and then start building your house. And at the end of the day, when you have mastered the exercise and we, in, for example, engage you to a snatch set, it sh shouldn't look like this. But you want to be cool. And that poker face also allows you to focus on your breathing. Mistake number nine, we put first things last. Isn't it the case, my dear over 40s, that we're always looking for ways to build more muscle, burn belly fat, and look as aesthetically pleasing as possible? And while that is also a goal of mine, we neglect the most important muscle. And this one's dear to my heart, literally. This one right here, the heart muscle. What good is it to have big biceps, big shoulder, big back, big quads, look for thousands of kettlebell exercises to build a particular muscle, if the most important muscle is max messed up. And this is where I believe the kettlebell comes into full effect because it builds strength endurance. Yes, it builds all these other qualities as well. Like I mentioned, it's a great generalist too. But one of its biggest aspects and one of its biggest benefits is it builds cardiovascular endurance. And the older we get, the more important it becomes. And mistake number 10, we walk around with the light switch mentality. What does this mean? We're on and off. Today we train. Today we think, hey, I'm asking Gregory on his new YouTube channel how many times I have to do this particular workout per week. But next month I quit altogether. And that's wasted energy and that's a waste of time. You're always on and off. So here's the biggest and the best advice that I can give you. The frequency over the year matters more than the frequency over the week. Normal people train on a statistical level, the way we see it in our gym, gym, between 40 and 45 times per year. So aim for these 40 workouts throughout the whole year. This is going to benefit you the most because this is how you build consistency. And when it comes to the exercises, don't mess it up with thousands of exercises. Include the swing. <sighs> Include the clean and press. And include a squat. I believe these three exercises are one of the most bang for your buck. And if you do these three exercises throughout the whole year, you, my friend, are going to win. Here's the next thing that you have to do. Clean and press that like and subscribe button. Share with a friend who's also interested in kettlebells. And if you made it this far, go ahead and download our kettlebell code ebook. Like I've mentioned, we help busy over 40s get in shape with only 30 minutes of kettlebell training per week in the next 30 days. And if you want to find out our method, you want to know how we do it, I want to give you this ebook. It's called Kettlebell Code for free. Check the first link in the description.